it's Shannon. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button because you'll find new DIYs, tutorials, and new inspiration here every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Today, I have a amazing IKEA hack for you. We're inside my office right now, which is within my she shed. And if you want to know more about our she shed build and finishing process, I will link a playlist down below and I'll give you a complete makeover look at the space. Now in my office here in the she shed, I have a space that I want to make sure has not only storage, it's very functional, but I want countertop space as well. So I need some really great work surfaces. Recently, we were at Ikea and I saw a beautiful, really neat dresser system. And I thought to myself, if this is one of those modular units, this may work perfectly for what I'm wanting within my office. And sure enough, all of these pieces sort of you build to create whatever size or shape you really need. And I needed something that was gonna be counter height as well as something really long. And so I was able to purchase a combination of different things that they have in the system to create this countertop space. And what I really love about this drawer system too is the drawers are really nice and hefty, so I know I'll be able to store quite a bit within them. And they are on casters, so they pull in and out really easily. They also have bumpers on them so they don't slam shut. So there was just so many great things about these pieces that I knew would work perfectly in my office. So we spent probably about two hours, and I'll share with you the different pieces that I put together to create this specific unit. If you need something shorter or longer or taller, you can do that with this system. But I'll share with you what I actually used for my space. And the one thing about this system is that you can purchase a flat base for it to sit on as well as a top so that it all sort of keeps everything together. But obviously we built a whole she shed and we didn't feel the need that we needed to buy these pieces, which were actually pretty pricey. So by creating our own base, which I'm gonna share with you today, uh, as well as adding our own countertop, we're actually gaining a lot more height with it as well as a larger countertop space with it. And it really probably is even more economical to do it this way as opposed to purchasing those pieces from Ikea. And then we have a really great custom built-in piece. So my plan today is to take you through the whole build process of creating this custom built-in piece. I will also break down all of the pieces that we end up using for this as well as sizes if you are interested in that. And then at the very end, I'll also share with you some of the IKEA pieces that we're gonna be using within those drawers to create a really organized space. So let's go ahead and get started with this Nordly IKEA hack. You will have to build these drawer units as you do have to build most IKEA furniture. We purchased eight units, which is a total of 16 drawers because each unit has two drawers total. And like I said, it took us about two hours to build all eight units with Brian and I working together. We ended up using six sets of the smaller drawers and only two sets of the larger drawers just because I really wanted everything to be really, really organized. And I was worried that the bigger drawers might have more of a black hole effect and things would get lost a little bit more easily in those, but they are great for larger items. So you can see this is the base of the unit that we started with and the start of the configuration. Once all of the drawer units were built, we were able to move on to the base. We used two by fours for this and basically made a big rectangle mitering the corners and screwing in from the sides. You'll see on the back, we tilted up the two by four and that later will give us a space to attach it to the wall. We also added another cross piece down the center and that is going to support the backs of all of the drawers. And you can see we also have perpendicular support pieces and those are for each individual drawer to rest on on the sides. Now, of course, this base was made to fit my configuration, so you want to make sure you measure to fit your configuration before attaching it to the wall. We also took into 
consideration the size of the countertop that was going to go on the back. So these are gonna be set out away from the wall. So here's a look at the base pieces added on to our support beam. You can see the bottom will eventually get a piece of trim, but it just raised the cabinets up about an inch and a half considering the width of the two by fours. And you can also see the space that is left behind the drawers. And we did this purposefully so that we could add the wider uh, countertop space to the top of the units when they were all in place. We also made sure to screw our cabinets to each other through the sides so that they would all become one unit. Then we used some L brackets and wood screws to screw the bases of the cabinets to that base piece. And then we also took one last security measure and used some scrap wood and attached them to the base piece where each one of the cabinets met in the back so that way they would never get pushed back up underneath the cabinet and become crooked. Once all of the bottom drawers were secured and in place, we moved on to adding the second layer of drawers onto the system. And next we added the countertop. So this is the Ekbakken countertop from Ikea and it was really affordable. I was able to purchase it while it was on sale. So we purchased an eight foot long section and did have to cut it down. This wall is about seven foot long. So Brian taped off the edges before he took the circular saw to it and cut it down to size. After it was cut down, we took it into the office to make sure it had a good fit before removing it again. And then we added brace pieces to the backs of the wall and leveled them with the height of the drawers. That way the back of the countertop would have a precise and level fit. Once those back brace pieces were in place, we were able to install the countertop securely. We used another combination of those L brackets attached to the drawers on the inside and then up through the bottom of the countertops. We did get three quarter inch wood screws for this to make sure that the screws would not go through the cabinets or through the countertop. And then all that was left to do was to caulk the seam between the wall and the countertop. So Brian likes to add some painter's tape to make sure we get a nice clean and crisp line. And then he always removes the painter's tape before the caulk dries completely. And that is what gives this that nice clean built-in look. The only other thing we did was add a sheet of beadboard to the end of the unit. You can see that hole in the back still. So we just covered that up with the beadboard. And then we also have a little gap on the left side there that we actually purposefully left instead of covering up because it is the perfect little cubby hole size to hold one of my cutting mats. I'm so excited that this project really came together. I love that I now have ample counter space as well as a ton of storage below it. Now I did go ahead and lay down some of the planks of the flooring that will eventually be going in here. We still need to add that as well as the trim. Um, I also laid the rug down just so I could kind of get a visual of what it's gonna look like in the end when we're completely finished with my office. I'll make sure to link the rug down in the description box if you're interested in that because I know I'm going to get a ton of questions about it. I also know at the beginning of this video I told you I would talk a little bit about some of the storage that I'm using within those drawers. 
So let me show you that. For the smaller drawers, I had a hard time finding things that would fit specifically into them. These are more for like being used as dressers. So Ikea has some more soft-sided storage bins that fit within these. That's not what I was wanting um, as a craft storage uh, unit. I knew I needed something more plastic because I was gonna be having adhesives and things that could potentially leak that I wanted to contain. I was able to find these plastic containers in Ikea. They were in their bathroom section actually. They have these two little openings and I don't see a name on here but I will put the barcode so if you want to look for these in Ikea then you'll have that reference. They are just a tiny bit too big for these drawers so we did have to do a little bit of a modification just on one. So these fit side by side like this inside the drawer and they were just a little bit too wide so we cut off one edge of these and just put that up against the wall or the side of the drawer and then they overlap in the center uh, with their little plastic lip that goes all the way around and then there is a little bit of room in the front or you could pull these all the way to the front of the drawer and have some extra space in the back but these definitely work out great because I can still keep little things in the front, bigger things in the back, and if anything spills, then I know that they're not going to damage the drawers. Now for the bigger drawers, I found these big plastic rubberized containers. These are in their kitchen sections. So these are more for kitchen drawers, but they fit so perfectly in the larger drawers of this unit. There is a side area, so it doesn't span the whole length of it, but it does fit perfectly front to back. My whole idea for the bigger drawers was to be able to store some of my vinyl items for my silhouette machine. So this is perfect for me to be able to slide those bigger rolls of vinyl into and then the smaller ones tuck right into the side next to it. Now the other thing I'm using in these drawers are these little plastic containers. You can find these at Walmart, you can even find them at Dollar Tree. And this is just another way that I've been able to keep everything sort of organized in the larger drawers. And not only are these really inexpensive, but they come in different sizes and shapes. So you're really able to configure something that will work for you and your projects. I do plan on doing a big office tour. So you're going to see every single thing that I have in my drawers and how I organize this entire space. So if you haven't yet, please click that subscribe button next to me. I'll put the She Shed playlist in the link below that if you want to see more great DIYs. And make sure to come find me on Facebook and on Instagram for more inspiration and behind the scenes. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.